Yo, welcome artists and art fans. Thank you guys for tuning in to the only show where we talk to all these artists about their trade tools and tips. In today's episode, uh, number 43, we have a uh, awesome new new guest for you guys today. Uh, he's a, uh, call him the American Necro Realist, currently residing in Los Angeles, California, guys. Uh, born September of 89 in Los Angeles, so all the way from uh, raised in Mexico City with an associate of arts and cinematography and art. So, so let's go ahead and give a warm welcome to Nor Oracle. Let's go ahead and uh, get him in here really quick. Sorry about the pause. Just had a little text from the baby mama. Everything is good. So I'm your host, Sim Zimmer, and you guys are on Chatty with Zim, episode number 43. What up, what up, what up, Nor? What's up? Not much, brother. How you doing today? Good, good, man. Just packing a bowl to begin this journey with you. There you go. I'm ahead of the game here, brother. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm almost there with you. How's it going over there in your area? My area is pretty, pretty decent, man. A uh, lovely day in, in Chicago, so pretty dope. Can't complain. Not really. Yeah, we're getting some sun here right now, so trying to enjoy that. That very famous Southern California sun. Oh, yeah, man. Glad to hear that, especially here, man. Over here, we had uh, been having these past this past week just very rainy, very cloudy. So, yeah, I hear the East Coast, especially like in Chicago, it gets really cold. I have a lot of friends that they moved over here to Southern California because it would be like super cold, and they would describe me um, the snowstorms like needles um, going through your skin, just going to get the mail. So I can only imagine. Oh yeah, man, that cold is brutal, man. Yeah, here we get super hot and weird weather, like um, very uh, metaphorical. You know, sometimes it's super hot and then sometimes it's kind of cold and we rarely get any rain. But yeah, it's been really weird really recently. Man, over, over here, sometimes we, we be having this weather where it's like uh, uh, nice and sunny in the morning and then mid afternoon we get some snow and then it gets really ugly and then by the end of the night it's just chilly so it's fucking weird man yeah uh being from socal i really hate the sun i hate being um sweaty and just the whole dampness of it it's like crazy you know but there's a bunch of people that dig it you know you could go to like venice or any other beach and it's super um crowded usually in the summer okay but there's always something for people there, yeah. Even for artists too, Venice Boardwalk. Man, it, it oh, that's pretty cool. The the, the Venice Boardwalk, uh, art walk there. Oh uh, yeah, they have art walks, but also um, what they have too is uh, if you should, it's like a first come first serve basically. So for any artist that is interested in vending or selling anything at Venice Beach, you could go, but it has to be super early. And the same with, um, there's a tagging um, space. It's a very famous um, area where a lot of taggers know, and it's free, it's for the public, but it's like a first come, first serve. So you have to always, you know, like go early and oh. to get your feet home. That's pretty cool though. Yeah, like in LA, there's a bunch of opportunities for uh, artists. But that's just the thing. There's just so many fucking artists that these opportunities are just so vast. That organization is kind of, um, it's tough organizing things, you know, in the area. Oh, yeah. Shit, and especially right now with what's going on, dude, so. Oh, no, yeah. Like, I guess, like, right now, like, the good thing with what's going on is with um, the smaller businesses or artists that are actually more established, it works off better because, um, you don't really have to pay vending fees or fees to go to um, to do these markets. That sometimes it's not that much, 
but sometimes it can be a pain in the ass to um, pay these fees and then you don't end up selling shit. So being able to do it from home can be easier, but it is making products, so. No, definitely. You know what? And we'll we'll actually get to that a little later, man. I uh, I always like to get the insight of uh, you know artists that participate in these art walks, um, simply because I wanted to do it this this year too. You know, I'm like, oh, this year, 2020, I'm gonna hit up and search and look what we got. So, yeah. Yeah, I know. It's, it's tough, you know, like especially when you're not used to producing so much work out of nowhere and like. I thought the creativity has to spark. It's harder, especially now at times when you're just at home, not exposing yourself to a lot of things. So you just have to use your creativity a lot more, your imagination, basically. Cool. So let me uh, let me ask you. Uh, let's start off with uh, right off the back, man. Indica or sativa, bro? Shit. Hybrid. I will. Yeah, I mean, like, medically, I would say hybrid because I have to have a high CBD count. But if I'm just doing it recreationally, I love to get stoned. Uh, like, I just love being zoned out. Yeah. You know, like, I really do enjoy that. Um, but it's it allows me to be more productive, definitely. Nice. Like, I'm not like off. Like, no, like, I, it, it gets me going, yeah. You know what? And that that's an awesome take, man. I don't think I've ever really asked that about, you know, uh, um, just the creativity. You know, some people are like, oh, I smoke pot and I get creative. Like, for me, uh, I used to, and now it just depends on my feeling, really. You know, marijuana has no no real say in what I what I feel, you know? It's like, so, we'll get into yeah, it. Yeah, like, they're both... Yeah, like there's those artists, you know, like that they really use the recreational aspect with their creativity, but some I don't really do that either. Like I just um I just use it for medicinal purposes. It helps me sleep, it helps me eat, it helps me think clearer. Yeah. Um but as far as creativity, like it just allows me to I guess get the picture better in my mind. You know. So it's not all cluttered and shit, you know, it's just more of a clear picture of what I want to do and accomplish. Oh, for sure, dude. So what's up with the, uh, for starters, let's, let's begin at the beginning, man. Nor Oracle dot call. Uh, let us know about your name. Um, you, can I call you Nor or do you prefer something else? Yeah, you can call me Nor or you can call me Oscar, whichever one is preferred. It's either or, yeah. I'm going to stick with Nor. Let's get that brand name in there, buddy. <laughs> All right. So, no, yeah, I mean, you know, yeah. Um, but uh, Nor Oracle started, I think it's been four years now that the name has been rolling around. Um, it initially started as a small business with uh, taxidermy and illustrations. Mm. And then it started growing into like little oddities and, um, I wanted to have a small business or something that I could um, kind of control because I've worked in various different positions of the trade from like warehouses to production lines to like films and stuff like that. So I wanted to run something that was mine and I could control without being whatever reason, just doing it. And if I fucked up, I fucked up. If it went good, it went good. So that's where it initially started. Um, at first, I really wanted to use a name that was um, easy to remember. Because yeah. uh, when, when you think of names, you have to think of something that's clever and something that's easy and shit, you know, like, it can't be too deep and all, <laughs> you know? So, like, that's why I was like, oh, shit, like, Nora Oracle, all right. Sorry? <laughs> no, I'm okay. I'm sorry. Oh, no, I went past that phase already. Neighbors. Cool. Um, but uh, yeah, dude, like, Nor Oracle basically means Nor is dark and Oracle is just the messenger. So the messenger of dark basically translates to that. But um, the easiest way of explaining Nor Oracle is just a world of darkness that's very whimsical. So Halloween, horror, um, macabre, 
oddities, things like that, but with a very whimsical taste to it. Nice. I like that. Because, uh, like, there's a bunch of uh, dark artists or dark brands like Blackcraft Colt and um, other things like that, but I wanted to approach it more in a more artistic, creative way and whimsical rather than a dark, oogie-boogie type of shit, you know, like, let's culty more, you know, fun. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's pretty cool, man. And take us back, man. How did uh, how did he get started in art? Because I know, I, you know, I, I read some of your bio. Uh, so for you guys that just tuning in, we're speaking to NorOracle.cult, all the way from uh, Los Angeles, California. Also, make sure you guys check out his page. Uh, check out the bios. Definitely, uh, we have that fineartamerica.com, your profile's there. So there's a link to that and a YouTube channel. So we'll we'll get that Norvision. It's pretty dope. I seen a few yeah. episodes, man. So Oh shit. Yeah, Thanks. dude. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah, yeah, we'll, um, we'll get to that, man. So from the beginning, brother. Let's go. So um I'm an art major. I have always really enjoyed art. It's been something super easy for me and um like a an escape, I guess you could say. Um, but I really didn't, um, I didn't really know that it could turn into an actual career until I got older and I did all these other things. Like I, I tried being a cop. I fucking tried oh, shit. Uh, being a nerd and shit. Like, so they, that's why when I, when I, they are. yeah, you know, like I fucking, the only reason why I wasn't a cop was because when you do your test, you have to take, um, a lie detector test eventually afterwards. Uh -huh. So they they ask you all these random questions, and I got a little freaked out because they're like, "Oh, well, how many times have you used um, drugs?" And I was like, "Shit, well, I don't want to lie." So what I did is I did the math of when I started smoking weed until that precise day, and how many times I would smoke during the day because I smoke every day, okay. like all day every day if I could. So I added it all that fucking time. And I put that answer in the test and they canceled my application because I smoked too much weed apparently. Oh, wow. Yeah, so I was going to be a custody assistant. Okay. So working in jails and shit. Oh, damn. Um, the big ones, man. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I've done security work and um, some, like, uh, private security working with uh, drug dealers and um, nightclubs in L.A., um, that they do certain things and stuff. So yeah, like, um, I've done, I've done the art, but as a side from the other stuff, you know, yeah. like trying to get that money, you know, like, or trying to find something to do. Um, but yeah, like I'm an art major and, um, I really went to school for art, not because I like art, but because I was good at it, you know? Yeah, yeah. Like, um, I always separated a career and a job. So a job is something that you do that you go every single day to get money, and that's a guaranteed check, no matter what you do. So either you pick up trash, you clean toilets, like what the fuck ever it is that you do, like that's a guaranteed check. But a career, that's something that you do every day when you wake up and you love it, regardless if you get money or not. That's a fucking career. Uh, so I've always done both. Okay. You know, so it's always been this wagering of like, well, I got to go to work and then I have to do a show or I have this piece to do and um, I have to like mage, like finish this stuff for school. So like it was always a tug and pull of different things. But that's because, I mean, as an artist, you have to be aware that you're not going to make fucking money out of that shit. You're just not. Yeah. You know, like it's just, it's not going to happen. I mean, you're going to make some cash, but not enough to, like, buy a house and shit like that, you know, unless, like, you're commercially aiming towards doing something like that, you know? Um, but if you're going your own route and your own way, like, it's little steps that you have to go through. So it's kind of more like taking money than getting it, you know? Yeah, yeah. It takes money to make money. And, and I, and I yeah, definitely hear what you're saying, bro, because it's like... Uh... You know, it, it's true what they say, you know, uh, artist fucking, what's that saying again? Um, starving artist. 
you know? So that's definitely true, man. And, you know, these artists that are making it big, either they they invested some time or sometimes people just have it. You know what I mean? Um, oh, yeah. And that's the that's funny. You know, when like the it, you know, what is really it? You know, is that your craft or is that, you know, like your 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 circle? And I'm sure like we'll, we'll touch more on that, you know, but I don't want to jump around too much. Aside, aside from what you asked me, you know, primarily about, like, my art background. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, like, uh, I went to school for uh, graphic design. And when I started doing graphic design, it was a traditional graphic design. So you learned how to do things by hand and not in the computer. Okay. And um, so stippling, cross-hatching, hatching, um, taping, like, all of these different uh, styles and different um, forms of doing form, not drawing, but doing design. So we were taught how to do design and not like not draw. So um, you would break things down into shapes and then these shapes you would um, do the design. So if this shape that was a certain um, shade would look good with a stippling and that's how you would achieve the shade, then you would use a stippling or you would use a hatch or you use a cross hatch or you use a taping you know, method or you would use a uh, ink and you do a wash, which is um, ink and water. So that's where I learned how to do all of these um, technical design um, yeah. tips, I guess, or uh, the uh, ways the, of doing art. Techniques and stuff? Yeah, techniques. Yeah, yeah that's where I learned um, a lot of these techniques. Uh, and um, that's because in high school, I went to marine biology magnet, and I had an elective. And it was either a free period or taking um, – art and i'm like fuck dude like i'm already fucking doing art every single day as it is i don't want to fucking go take an art class so i had a free period and since i was going to school in san pedro which is like in the beach city and i lived in east la that was like a fucking half an hour to 40 minute drive so i had to wait for the school bus so um i had to make up that time by taking another course and that's when i took a vocational graphic design and learned all that oh, stuff. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Good. So, I mean, like, I had friends that um, were gangsters and tagging and, you know, like, doing all that stuff, and I was doing art and dropping acid and shit, you know, so. Yeah, it worked. Yeah, it worked out somehow, <laughs> you know, yeah. And uh, you, yeah. you said that, you know, you never had... Uh you never really put like art or thought of it as an actual career and stuff. Like what was your first, uh, I guess, exposure to it or to the point where it's like, Oh, I know how to draw or I could draw, you know, this is it. Um, well, I was, like I said, I was doing, um, in high school, I went to Marine biology magnet. So to be a Marine biologist and a magnet school, it's kind of like mini college. Okay. And, um, I was supposed to go into being a marine biologist, but I didn't really like it. I was just more like, what the fuck ever about it. Um, and in my senior year, it was kind of like the moment of deciding what do I want to do with my life? Do I want to keep going to school or do I want to get a job? And Or do I combine these two things of getting the job and going to school? And um, that's where I found film. So... Actually, I didn't really go to art school primarily. I went to school for film. Okay. So I didn't really discover my art career or like that. I wanted to um, do it full on until probably college. Yeah. Yeah. Well, because like, um, like, I don't like. I come from a very Mexican background, so like my parents are both um, Mexican immigrants, and as a um, as as a Mexica, like art is not really seen as a, as a career, you know. It's seen more as a creative output, as a hobby. Yeah, true. You know, so these things that are more hobbyists rather than a career are very minuscule in the eyes of our parents or of our elders. So they want you to always aim higher than that. So I. I went to school for film, not, I mean, film is not anything greater than fucking art, you know, but um, I initially wanted to be an 
art teacher. Okay. So that's where the whole art thing or the career as an artist came because I put, oh, well, I could teach art in high school and get paid. Fuck yeah. Oh, that's pretty cool, though. Yeah, so, I mean, I don't, I do believe that people could have a career with art, but I just think it's not as clear as just, well, I'm going to draw a picture and that's how I'm going to make my living, just drawing pictures for the rest of my life. Uh, because even the people that are cartoonists, they're working under a company and it's their name they're selling, you know, like the yeah. company's brand that they're saying, not their own. That's when they go to comic cons or whatever, and then they sell their own shit there and you're paying the artist work. You know, but other than that, like you're going to Disneyland and seeing the Disney artists doing Disney cartoons. So that's how they're making their money doing that. So yeah, art is fucking hard. <laughs> yeah, uh, no, yeah, you fucking, you said that. That's fucking true, man. I'm on, I'm on the same boat, you know, and definitely working, working to try to just make money, man. Make money off my passion, really. You know what I mean? At the end of the day. That's yeah, no. The yeah, like that's that's like where where things come into play. Like they get different because um, when you start trying to make money with art, you're doing a lot more things rather than just art. You're doing marketing, mm -hmm. business, fucking you know, like printing and shit. You know, especially if you're doing everything by yourself. There's a bunch of shit that they don't teach you at art school that you get out of art school. And you're exposing yourself to all of these events, art walks or galleries and things like that. And next thing you know, you don't know how to hang your art. You don't know how to frame your art. You don't know how to sell your art. You don't know how to present your art. You don't know how to present yourself as an artist. So like, it's a bunch of shit that you don't really know, even if you're an artist, that you have to keep in mind after you take the fact of your own craft. You know what I mean? Because um, like we've talked about before, the whole um, thing of artists using uh, other people's work, like fan art, mm -hmm. you know, and how um, you mentioned uh, you could use that as a way of perfecting your craft and getting better at it, which is true. But when you reach a certain point, like, let's say for me, like, if I want to include um, you in a gallery showcase that I'm doing, well, are you going to present pure fan art or is there work that you're going to be able to present that is Zim's work? You know what I mean? That's where it differentiates and it just breaks out from being an artist to doing X amount of other shit. No word. Very, very, very true, true points, man. I mean, uh, it, it's, it's definitely like I, like I tell a lot of artists as well, you know, especially today. Uh, especially artists that want to get into like the whole comic book business and stuff like that. You know, it's like creating, um, it's nothing new under the sun anymore. You know what I mean? So you, re you yeah. really have to be original. Um, as far as art goes and original art, it's, um, you know, it's, I think there's a market for everyone, man. You know what I mean? You'll be surprised the type of art that fucking sells. Um, no, yeah, like, fucking, okay. and it's, that's the cool part about comic book art or fan art. There's always so many people that, are like, they love that shit that even if it's something super basic, it will sell, you know? And I think that's a blessing, but at the same time, it's a curse, you know? Because it's a blessing because as an artist or a starving artist, hell yeah, you're going you're gonna to guarantee sell at least a $5 piece, you know? But as an actual artist or an artist that's starting up trying to get momentum and trying to reach these galleries or, or just a, a, a level of independency as an artist, it's a curse because you don't have things that are showing that are you. You have things that are showing that are to sell. You know what yeah. I mean? So like that's where it gets tricky and you can't really say that an artist that does fan art is a good artist without kind of being like, I don't know. You know, like that's where you have to look at their portfolios and see, okay, well, let's see how they use this fan art, how they do the other art, how they do like their own art, you know, like, cause as an artist, you have to do different styles, not just your own, you know? And it's, 
fucking tricky, dude, because people get so fucking butthurt, man. <laughs> you know, you can't, like, you can't say all this shit without, like, in the back of your head being like, holy fuck, like, this person's gonna get butthurt, or this person might get butthurt, like, oh my god, like, all of the fans of blah blah are gonna get butthurt because you said that they suck, like, no, dude, like, it's just so subjective that it's difficult, you know? No, I, I, I definitely, I, I hear that, man. And it's, uh, like, for, for me, I'm at, I'm at that point where it's like, I'm starting, I'm not getting bored doing it because I love all this shit, but it's like I definitely trying to put out more characters, you know, more of my own shit out there. But yet again, you know, then it comes to that, you know, you know, being an artist and you're self, self-conscious about the shit that you're putting out there and, you know. Yeah, like, that's, that's funny, you know, like, that's the funny thing, because as long as you're producing things, that's, I guess, what, as an artist, you have to um, work on, just keep producing shit, but then, yeah, like, you are very self-aware of, like, shit, like, is this good art, is this, this, you know, worth this much, or is this that worth that much, you know, because that's the problem I have, you know, like, with pricing my shit, you know, like, like I said, like I still have this mentality of like art is a hobby. And even now that I'm doing shows and showcasing myself in galleries and shit and like having um, art sold or what the fuck ever and shit, like I still consider like it weird and shit, you know? So whenever I have to price things, I get really fucking weirded out whenever it's like, oh, like this is $300. I'm like, holy fuck, dude, like who the hell's gonna pay $300 for this piece? Not because it sucks, but it's like, it's, fuck you know yeah, yeah yeah so it's it's tricky man it's it's very very tricky and uh as an individual for me it's been um it's been very curious figuring out what what's behind that you know is it more of like a personality thing is it a craft thing is it like a s- social thing you know like does the number of Instagram followers that you have equal them to like how good your sales are, or how good as an artist you are? And, like you know, it's like uh, I, it's fucking... yeah. I think I think in in uh, to a certain point, like let's say, uh, let's say someone who has I don't know uh, sixty to a hundred thousand followers, you know, uh, they are gonna have a lot more sales than you or I. You know what I mean? I I think yeah. I sold one piece in the last month or two. And you know, no, yeah, and like that's, and then that's another part that we need to take in as artists. Like, how do we get these followers? How do we reach all of these people like that are gonna want to buy our art, that are gonna want to see our art in order to consider buying our shit? You know, so like, it's a bunch of crap, dude. That it's hit and miss, you know. Like, and when I first found the monstrous uh, clan yeah. and like and you guys and stuff, like. It was this new world that I wasn't exposed to because I knew about tagging and, you know, like that whole hip hop culture, but combining it with art, like I've only heard of the whole Chicano artwork and like the lowrider stuff, but never with tagging, you know, like I always thought tagging and illustration was too separate Okay. or like just similar, but not that you could do both, you know, and I never really learned tagging to begin with. It was just not like something that I was interested in. So I mean, don't get butthurt, dudes, just... You know, we all, we all have our different stuff, you know, but like I had a bunch of friends that, you know, were in, in crews and, you know, like that, even my younger brother was in the tagging yeah. crew and shit, you know, so like I'm, being in LA, you're exposed to that shit. You're going to be exposed, you know, to it. So I was aware of that, but I didn't know that art fit with it. So it was, yeah, you know, yeah, something it, like a whole new it, world, it, basically. It, it, it's definitely a whole new world and it's definitely like a sub subculture of art there you know there's a, a, a urban urban uh, urban art as i would call it you know i mean just if you want a basic back from like the graffiti background and stuff you know how i was born in new york and whatnot but yeah when it comes to graffiti and when it comes to monstrous art clan i mean we have people that dabbled in graffiti i dabbled in graffiti when i was younger so my graffiti letters are you know, they look more of that graffiti style uh, as yeah. opposed to, I think, like Thalo Halo. Uh, I don't think he's a graffiti artist, but his letters, his colors are very graffiti-esque and they are very clean. 
you know? Yeah, there's um, there's this really cool guy, um, Ito. Oh, yeah, Ito. yeah. That guy's yeah, sick, dude. Exactly. Like, I mean, I don't know much about tagging and stuff, but I love how he does his colors. Yeah. You know, so, like, there's a bunch of taggers, and, you know, that, that they're really good with drawing, and it fucking... It itches me really bad seeing that they only do fan art, you know, because it's like, dude, it's like, you could do so much. And, like, um, I remember having a conversation with Bruce about um, about how we do our work and um, Posca paint pens and shit. And um, I mentioned Gesso. And he was like, what's Gesso? Like, he didn't really know what Gesso was. And I mentioned it to him. But I see a bunch of taggers and the, the whole like crew artists and stuff that you guys don't use Jess and it's like dude like Jesso would make your shit look so fucking gnarly and what is, what is and that, Jesso? is that a type of art um, marker um Jesso is this clear liquid that you put on any surface that basically makes it um, smooth oh. so you know when you buy uh, the cheap canvases and it has like the little like um, the little yeah, yeah, dots yeah. in it for like skin if you put gesso on it and you smooth it out with a palette knife, then it's going to be smooth. What? So when you use it, you're not going to have those bubbly things. They're like, when you're running your pen, it's not going to like, boop, 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 boop. it's going to be like a smooth stroke. Oh, okay. And not only that, but you could put that shit in any surface, so like wood, fucking steel, uh, fabric, uh, canvas, and it's going to make your piece last longer. So it's, a, so you know? it's almost like a varnish type thing or? Yeah, it's like a varnish. Yeah. Yeah. And it's super um, crucial, you know, because especially with um, with young and with poor artists, you know, like because you basically do art anywhere. Anything you find from cardboard to rags to fucking, you know, like found um, on canvases and shit in the street, like. You do your artwork anywhere you can. Well, if you do a badass piece and you want it to last and you want to sell it, you're going to want it to make sure that it looks good. It's presentable and yeah. shit, you know? Jesso does it easily. Cool. It turns like a fucking $5 piece to a $20 piece because it lasts longer. I'll definitely look into that, man. Yeah. And, it's, and it's not that expensive, you know? Like, but that's one of those little art school like tips and shit that you learn in art school and shit but it's one of those things that you take with you and you run with it because it's super fucking badass and you could fix um can ripped canvases with it too oh shit nice so, like kind of the like glue and shit yeah dope hey yeah, so, i mean hey nor before we go on any further i think we're down to about a good half hour in the show you want to join me another Sounds another good. half hour afterwards continue it yeah i'm done yeah. Yeah, I'm done. Yeah. Because, you know, the, the talk is very interesting. It's very cool. And uh, I, there's still a lot of fucking talk about, man. Yeah, totally. Cool. So that said, everybody uh, joining. Thank you guys for joining. Right now we're talking to NorOracle.cult. Make sure you guys go follow him here on Instagram, actually. Uh, let me go ahead and do this. Also, uh, let's talk about uh, the Hive Gallery, man. I, I see that you mentioned uh, you're a resident artist at the Hive Gallery. What exactly is that, man? Oh, oh yeah. and one more thing. Happy birthday, uh, Bruce13, Monsters Art Clan. Bruce. Um, yes, the Hive Gallery. So I am um, I'm an artist, a resident artist at the Hive Gallery, which is in downtown Los Angeles. And the Hive Gallery, fuck, dude. Like, it's such a weird, whimsical, magical fucking place, dude. It's like... It's like Disneyland of art. I was checking it out. You know, like, it's crazy, dude. And um, it's, so, the way it's, hopefully I don't fuck this up. So, the way it's, um, it's laid out, it's the front, you have the main showcase, which you have um, featured artists, and then they show, like, um, different types of artworks. And then in the center, you have um, kind of, like, local artists. So, like, a wall full of local artists. And then you have a bunch of different walls that are from the residence artists so it's kind of like a beehive okay that's cool um and um and it's so sick dude because it's like it, it's big and then it gets smaller inside and longer as you go in and it could be from the opening to art walks super packed or sometimes dead but there's always something going on there they have showcases and different things and 
what's badass about it is that they help local artists showcase every single month because um there's a different um theme every month so every month there's like let's say uh, a vhs theme or a fucking um horror theme or whatever like type of theme that they have and you get to showcase your work you sell it they keep a percentage but you sell your own work yeah and then um as a resident artist you have a wall and you have um your own artwork or whatever you can do whatever you want with your wall and shit and you pay like a monthly uh rent fee and shit and it's pretty sick dude like it i've been a year there and i was gonna bail la because i'm like even if I would, even though I was raised in, um, I was I was born in East LA, and I'm an LA person. Obviously, you can hear my fucking voice. You know, <laughs> I'm from fucking LA, but I hate LA. <laughs> I just I can't stand this area because of just so many different things going on. Like I, it's it's hard to stand out when there's so much light. You know, yeah. there's so many stars going here. You know, like yeah, so. Yeah. There's no. It's nothing against really there. It's just I need my own space to fucking expand and shit so i was doing like you know what i'm gonna hit up all of these different galleries see which ones hit me back up and see what happens and the hive was one of the only galleries that hit me back up and i was like fuck yeah let's fucking go and i started showcasing actually my photography oh, before my nice. life yeah so uh, they knew me as a photographer before an artist so my art um the owner of the gallery saw my art and he was like dude i want you and i was like all right cool yeah no like i i just never really like thought my art was as good as people say it is you know but i guess that's the artist thing you know like we don't really fucking you know see our our creativity or our virtues even if other people are like slamming in our fucking faces and shit you know like so yeah yeah Definitely. Yeah, your art is it, it, it's very uh very trippy, man. <laughs> it's it's fucking dope. It's, Thanks, it's dope. Man. It's dope. It's trippy. I like it. You know? Yeah, it's um it's been fun trying to find like an actual established um what's it called? Uh, style per se, I guess you could yeah. say. Cause um I love portraits. I love portraiture work, you know, like and as far as paintings, I don't really like, um, I put it up, visual art, I guess you could say. Like, um, I hate cubism. Mm. I don't like, um, what's it called? Uh, just that, those squares with lines. I went to fucking art school and I can't even fucking say this shit. Um, but just all that, just contemporary art, I'm not really like, into it you know i like a lot of surrealism a lot of dadaism you know like um horror type stuff you know um, and when i started drawing i wanted to do work like that so i was aiming to do work like repka or or um dan seagrave you know shit like that but uh i couldn't <laughs> yeah now all with it all within so, due time bro i mean oh yeah i mean like uh, i i'm I wasn't sweating it because, like, um, I couldn't really do what I wanted to do art-wise, but I was able to create these monsters with makeup effects. So it, I did it somehow, just it wasn't fully, like, an actual thing how it is now, you know? Have you ever thought about blending your, uh, your eye for photography and art into one? Uh, yes, actually, um, I haven't done anything recently, but I used to do um, kind of like a collective called Wicked Garden, mm, that's cool. where we would do, um, we, we would basically fuse together erotica with um, surrealism or necrorealism, and that would include makeup effects with shibari or kimbaku or um, things like that, a lot of blood, a lot of... Um, we did a make we did a few shoots with some makeup effects and stuff. So like, there's been a few things that I've done like some American necrorealism um, projects that have um, like, combined my art and my makeup and um, everything basically in one. Yeah, so there's a few of 
Um, yeah. Yeah, these are. <laughs> that's some of them. So th this is photography right here? Yeah, that's okay. photography. That was um, kind of like a last minute shoot that we did, um, aside from another shoot. These are awesome, though. Yeah. Uh, thanks. Yeah, like, um, that was probably, like, the first time I actually did a shoot where I was aiming more towards sensual, because as a photographer, I'm not really keen to being a model photographer. It's more of, like, capturing the essence, so I want to be the eye that captures what, you know. But, yeah, these are my pieces. These are, uh, that one's 11 by 14. I was very baked when I did that. These are bad. These are dope. Thanks, man. Like, I do a lot of weed art because I, I mean, I really love marijuana, but um, it's really easy. A lot of these, um, the ones that are funny are because as I'm doing them, I'm just laughing my ass off, just like having fun doing the piece. But then there's some that I actually like put more work into them and. Like, so, like that one, um, the gnome with the grass, that one was more thought about than the other ones. The other ones were just like, ah, oh, shit, I'm just like gonna have some fun with this. So yeah, like sometimes I take my artwork very serious and sometimes I don't. And uh, the serious ones come out pretty cool. The ones that don't and are not serious come out just funny as shit. And over here you have, uh... A horror film, nightlife. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I um, I ran a horror production for about two years. Cool. Yeah, we did a, a horror series. It's on YouTube. All that stuff you can find on YouTube. Sweet. Also, uh, for you guys that don't know, if you guys do follow Monsters Art Clan, and you guys know we do the artist versus artist battles, uh, nor is actually a participant in those battles. Uh, you know, we had a crazy little falling out there that happened uh, where, where oh, people yeah. got butt hurt, but, I mean... I mean could we talk about that? or like? Uh, we that, can talk about it. I don't, I don't care, man. This is an is an old, oh, okay. thing. I don't right. give a fuck here. It's unedited. If you want to talk shit and call people out, you can go ahead. Well, I mean, it's not, it's not talking shit. It's just like, I guess, doing, just giving a tip to, like, another, other artists and shit, you know, that are either doing the battles or just considering it, or just in general, like, just a general tip, you know, because, like, I've seen this shit happen in the galleries as well. Oh, shit. Um, and it's, it's just be fucking respectful, you know, like, stop assuming shit, you know, like, as an artist, you need to not jump in other people's necks and shit just because you feel personally threatened. You know, like, if you really have a problem with someone, you should literally, like, as a human being, go and talk to them and, and not, not assume anything, you know? So, what the issue that happened with that battle, you know, was just the same thing, you know, somebody feeling a certain way and just taking it up the ass and, you know, wanting to do it their own way and use my work to make themselves feel better. And I was like, nope. So, yeah. he got, <laughs> you know, and then, like, it's just, I guess the only shit talking I'll say is just being childish enough to fucking claim that me and Bruce are buddy buddy when, like, I barely met the dude. Yeah. You know, no, so. that's, uh, I think that's how we, uh, we actually found you, man. And, uh, you know what I mean? It's, and this this is what the battles are about. You know, the battles were meant so not only can you grow as an artist, but you get to talk to people and be around like-minded people. You know what I'm saying? Unfortunately, yeah, and then, yeah, and like that's that's the the weird shit about these battles, though, dude. Like, because sometimes I've I've like this is just a question that I had that I really don't give a shit that sometimes can ignite issues and shit. But it's like, are these battles based out of popularity or out of craft? You know, because I had less I have way less followers than this dude had. But he was so like adamant about getting that W, you know, and it's crazy because it's like right, like if it's like if it was based down to craft, my work with his my work looked better than his. 
or like it's better but then i'm not gonna like fight about this shit so i was just kind of like curious about it you know trying to see where it went yeah. you know Cause in all retrospect i really didn't give a shit you know I, I did the battle because i want my shit to be seen that's it i want people to like you and bruce and any other artist and shit that's i seen this and that gets to see my work to just get to know my my name get to know my art and that's it well let's let's you know i'm not let, I'm sorry to cut you off but let's put it this way um you're here he's not you know what i mean um you know it's uh as far as that goes i personally my feelings towards that is yeah don't don't be fucking childish if uh like I said, this thing wasn't supposed to be uh, for, like, um, bragging rights or anything. And the way it works, uh, just for anybody else who's interested in joining uh, the artist versus artist battles, uh, the way it works is when you vote, it's one vote per person, and they vote. It, it, it's not necessarily a, uh, a favorite you know what I mean? Like your followers and stuff like that. It's it's not a uh, a popularity contest. I've seen uh, people with thousands, thousands of fucking artists uh, lose and vice versa. You know what I mean? So, I mean, if you got the numbers for it, then by, by all means, use them. But... Yeah, because like if if the battle wouldn't have had been cut, he would have won. And that would have been totally fine with me. You know, it's just when he started taking it to the point where like, oh, like I'm winning and it's not fair that, you know, we get, it's a tie. Cause I was like, all right, you won. Fuck it, whatever, dude, you know, but like, don't get all mad. Start fucking claiming all this shit. That's not really true. You know, cause like I was even telling Bruce, I was like, I don't know if I told him or not, but like, I think it's just funny because sometimes I may come off as like super, like not somebody that could do anything, you know, because I, I may sound like a surfer. I may look like a fucking chick or whatever, you know, but like I fucking grew up in East LA, dude, you know, yeah. like, I could fucking be as ghetto, as whitewashed or as educated as I fucking want, you know, but people just like to bark, you know, and that's just what you shouldn't do as an artist. You shouldn't disrespect other artists that's gonna eventually make yourself look like shit because now if that the case being that let's say he fucking pops into my gallery or whatever i already have a bad fucking rep with this dude i don't like him i don't like how he represents himself do i want him to be in my gallery in my space fuck no i don't yeah so that's what that leads to you know i don't have to argue with him i don't have to like call him up i don't have to like fight with him but if i see him in my home in my space trying to do something and represent my gallery like that that's when i'm gonna be like no fuck you yeah you know that's when like the the, the whole ghetto me or whatever is gonna come up because he's like yeah you don't treat people like that and then expect all this shit you know and i've seen that shit happen in the gallery and that's the sad part about a lot of la artists that they don't consider this whole community type of thing it's just more of like me 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 and and I'm the one that gets the followers, and I'm the one that's gonna get the sales, and I'm the one that's gonna get the, the dough, and all of that stupid shit. And it's just like, I don't get your brain, dude. Yeah, <laughs> no, know? and uh, you know, that's why uh, that's why uh, Bruce thought of this community, and he also he's also out there on the West Coast, and uh, you know, he's he participates in art walks, or participated, I guess. We can't say that now, but... Um, you know, he he's seen this firsthand himself, so he wanted to do a little community where a bunch of us just got together and, you know, come up together, man. Push each other. You know what I mean? No, yeah. And, like, and that's, I like seeing that shit, you know, it just sucks when, like, they start mixing personal shit in between, you know, because, like, my art is dark, you know, like, I, I do a lot of horror, you know, photography, a lot of, like, horror and dark and even extreme fucking shit. So my scene or my um, fucking audience is the goth and, you know, like punky and, you know, like core people and shit, you know? So like, even I see that in those scenes, dude, you know, like fucking people like getting buttered over the stupidest shit, you know, or being competitive. It's just like, dude, like, ew, you know, like, like it's just not fucking cool. But 
you're going to have that anywhere and you have to have a, a, a you know, a, a tough skin, you know? And oh yeah, for sure. I learned, I learned how to have a tough skin in production, you know, like, so anybody could talk shit. And also that's a good sef- uh, segue. And I think uh, we'll, we'll see how far we can get with this, but you know, you got to have a tough skin and, and that goes all the way down to like criticism when it comes to an artist, you know? It's all like how, how do you uh, yeah. how do you personally deal with that, and what how would you recommend an artist deal with uh, such criticism? Um, as an, uh, personally, I love that shit. I mean, whenever somebody talks about my art, I know that they they at least saw it, mm-hmm. you know, because then they have something to talk about. Um, but I could see how a lot of artists take it personally because you do put. You, you pour your passion and your soul into each piece and you know like it comes from you so it's very important to you it's personal every single thing that you do you know but that's where they that they do teach you that in art school how to do critiques and how to hear the people's perspective of your work and how to even talk about your work because that's the fucking funny part about art where you could have a piece of shit work but if you know how to talk about it you know how to present it it doesn't matter. Yeah, exactly. And and one of them, I don't know, I think this happened about a year or two ago. There was an artist gallery where they were selling imagination art. There was literally physically no fucking art available. Everything was in imagination in your mind. And this guy sold a piece for like $150,000. Yeah, that was all talk yeah, right no. there, you know? He, he, he had to tell a nice fucking catchy story, man. Yeah, and out of that piece, you're going to have people that are going to shit talk the fuck out of that like piece. Me? And then there's going to be people that are going to they're gonna love it. Yeah, so, <laughs> you know, as, as an artist, you're going to have to deal with this criticism. You're going to have to find your target audience, you know, and that's key to to the, the type of art that you do, that, you know, your style. You know, style is not precisely just the way you make your art. It's the way you present it and the way you aim it, you know? So, like, if you want to be a, a graffiti artist, I'm pretty fucking sure you're not going to go to shows that cater to punk artists or goth artists when you're doing graffiti. Yeah, maybe out of, like, ten, two or three might like your work, but everybody else isn't, you know? So you have to really know where to aim your work, and you're going to deal with certain criticism in certain places and in others with others, you know? And with me and my work, I unfortunately have to deal with it in every single fucking field, you know, because um, when I go bend, I add my photography in there, and I have this um, this series called uh, the Beauty and Death series, and it's a series on uh, on overdose. So it's a chick um, that she looks beaten up, and she's overdosed on coke, and there's like a pile of fake coke and shit. So there's posters of it. It's a triplet. So it's a three picture series of her and shit. And like her tits are out and everything. And but um, but it's more morbid. You know, yeah. it's not erotic. It's just fucking morbid. You know. So I have to deal with hearing people telling me why, what the fuck is that? You know, like oh yeah, like I like tits. You know, so it's like I get both sides. You know, whether it's somebody being perverted and stupid, just looking at a pair of boobs. Or somebody being disgusted and scared because they're looking at somebody dead, you know. And the same with uh, my witchcraft stuff. You know, I have um, real animal bones in my table and shit. And before, the, even witches are like, "Wow," or like, "Whoa," and I'm just like, "Huh," you know. Like, <laughs> so, you know, it's I get it from either side, dude. You know, and I just have to deal with it and just learn from whatever is going you know like like right now like my artwork um the ones that i've recently been doing and stuff looks more pretty and cute and honestly like those shits are easy for me to do like it takes me like less than a day to do each of those or hours and shit but people like that shit no yeah and 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 you're right and and you know there there's stuff like for example uh there's a there's a piece that i did last year and it was a, an amazing. This was, pr- this is like a Zimmer, uh, a Zim original, uh, and it, my 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 brother helped me out, Delanu. So shout out to him. Uh, so we both went at it with this piece that the client wanted. He wanted the like a portrait of 
uh, the city of Chicago, downtown Chicago. So I did it. Looked fucking amazing. Two by two feet by three feet, of fucking big as hell. You know, looked like a like a damn oil painting, bro. Badass. I think I got like sixty likes. You know, I put a Pikachu and I got like a hundred and fifty. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, like, that's that's like the tip that I could give artists. You know, like really, really know where your audience is. And even if you do know your audience, you're still going to get criticism. You're still going to get favoritism. You're still going to get, like, people that think your art is really lame. And then there's people that are gonna think your art is fucking badass, you know. And that's what I'm going through right now, you know. Like, especially with the whole quarantine thing. Like, I have to watch my materials because ordering shit takes forever. Yeah. You know, and, and I don't have certain things with me, you know. So I have to really like think about what the fuck I'm doing because I obviously want to sell. I don't just want to make art, you know? So like, it's, it's a hit and miss, you know, like, and it's tricky because there's no right or wrong answer. You know, it's just comes with what you do. You know, like if you're good at your graffiti stuff with um, those, uh, those, what do you call it? Like, it's like those posters you guys use from the post office yeah, the, and shit. The, the slaps and stuff as we call them. Yeah, like those shit sell, right? People buy that oh, shit. Yeah. All right, like, I don't get that shit, you know, because that's easily rippable. It gets wet. It's fucked. You know, like, all the work that you put in, you know, gets goes to shit. Like, unless the person who buys it from you frames it, you know, like, you know, like, that looks sick, you know? Unless, like, you're you're selling your shit like that, matted, framed, and everything. And, like, I, I, I don't understand the the aspect behind it as much, but... People like that shit, you know. Yeah, the uh, just just to answer that question, I mean the 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 reasoning behind these it's it's a it's a it's a hip hop graffiti culture thing, you know, where artists the name of the game in graffiti is to get your name out and as much and as much exposure as you can. That's the name of graffiti, being a, a graffiti artist. Um, so you want your name to be known, and the only way that's going to be accomplished is to get your name up. One of the easiest ways was to put your tag your name on here, and when you're going on the bus, you're walking downtown, you slap these on the back of the seat, uh, the stop sign, and whatever, anything else you could fucking reach these at, you know? So that's, I mean, that has a long time. That's been around ever since before I got into the game. And I think that's that's the that's the niche. I mean, people love it, you know. Yeah, I've seen a bunch of people doing it, and then like some of them sell for like sixty bucks. I'm like, Whoa. and like, and yeah. and you know, two minutes, uh, actually a minute left. I would actually recommend every artist to get into it. I would recommend you to get into it, fuck around with it, play with them, and you'll be amazed at some of the uh, you know, if you want followers, you'd be amazed at the type of followers you will attract with these. Uh, they're free. They're free. All you have to do is just go to ups.com and order them. I'd say order the max uh, amount as you can when you do, and just wait a couple weeks, and you got them right in your front step. So, Sick. yeah, I'll try that. Before. So, dude, Nora, we're uh, we're down to about uh, about a good thirty seconds left. Uh, you're definitely staying around, correct? You want to take a break? Uh, you want to take a two? A I'm good. Yeah, we can, yeah, I'm good. Okay, so we'll jump straight back into it then. Um, let me go ahead and close this show out really quick. So for you guys, sure. you guys that are tuning in late, you better go back and watch this shit. Uh, if you guys don't, if you guys just joined us, uh, we're joined by my good friend Oscar, aka Nor Oracle dot Cult. I um, mean, you guys could definitely find them. There's the stuff is pinned at the bottom. Uh, also check out the Hive Gallery here on Instagram. Uh, make sure you guys go to uh, YouTube and definitely hit up his Norvision, N-O-I-R-V-I-S-I-O-N. So check out his channel on YouTube. While you're there, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Then hop over to Chatting With Zim and hit that subscribe button as well there too. Um, yeah. Right? Word. Word. Also shout out to Masters Art Clan. Uh, Bruce thirteen dot art. Happy birthday once again, brother. Uh, and that's about it, man. Uh, Twenty seconds left, man. Any last words before we get out of here and hop back in again? Smoke weed every day. Every day, 
And uh, also make sure that uh, you guys join us right now. We're about to go into hour two. And then at, Get crazy. Yep, yep. And then after that, in about an hour, we got Seven is Life. And then after that, we got Call Me Dreads. So we'll see you guys right back. Hop back in, guys. <laughs>